the 2018 Megatons are all but out. And I'm the only one that hasn't given my opinion. So my first topic today is going to be, are the tins good? And if we get a good chunk of likes, we're going to talk about, are the tins going to be worth buying tomorrow? You would think that the two kind of go in hand in hand with each other, but different shirt robbies tend to maybe sometimes say the same shit or tend to mix up things. So let's get some likes on this video to communicate that you guys want the other half of that discussion. And I want to ramble on about product design in this video and just how Konami can put shit in a box and sell it. All right, let's dig on into that. I have heard so many different opinions about the Megatons. Most of them have been massively negative to the, Robbie, are you still going to open up a bunch of tins this year? Oh, we're having the biggest bonfire ever this year. I can't actually wait. So this video is going to be, is the product design of the tins good? Uh, this isn't going to be the, hey, should we buy these? Now, the set as a whole is missing eight secret rares. And I'll be honest with you, thank God <laughs> they took these out of the set. Like, I'm just so adversely happy that we don't have to deal with uh, just these in general. Now, it, it's one of them's kind of sucky, but you know, you, you pick your poison. So, first off, we don't have Masterpiece, which, eh, it got banned. Who really cares? Card's like three bucks. If you really want one, go buy it now. Ash, Duelist Alliance, Unending Nightmare, Tornado Dragon, Gaia Saber, Trickstar Reincarnation, and Akashic Magician are not in the tins. First off, I had crazy theories all last week. To those of you that was watching this channel, it was like, what if they reprint Ash Blossom in the tins? You know, here's the thing. These tins are going to sell just because of the, the tin toppers. The people that are looking to the set, they're like, oh my god, Elemental Hero Solid Man. Sure. That's that's a very good card for hero players. New Synchron support, so the USA fanboys kind of, well, they get their take. But the tins solely for the promo cards are the reason why people buy them. Now in the past we've had Ghost Ogre, things like that. And these tin promos feel extremely lackluster to me as a whole. But that's not what's going to sell the tins. It's the, the contents of the tins inside. And I think I think Konami had an idea when they were designing this set. Uh, Konami's also proven to us that they're scared shitless to release Nail Fiber. At this point, Chirabini and our other the Aurora Mage chick these other like three link monsters also I don't know why the fuck the room like monsters still in jail but whatever Konami's proven to us that they're scared shitless to release these or whatever product they release needle fiber in is going to sell it's ingenious so when you have a set like the tins it's not a good idea to put things like this in because one people are going to be looking to the tins to get their reprints all right that's one of the main reasons why people would go after them right which will tie into my discussion tomorrow about the actual value of the tins and so forth. But the eight secret rares that we don't have to deal with, out of all of them, I'm these cards just got reprinted as it is. I don't want to fucking pull an Akashic Magician. Shit's a fucking super rare now. Trickster Reincarnation got its reprint before the biggest event of the year for it. All right, cool. That's good. Like, excellent. And then... <sighs> Tornado Dragon, sure. Unending, sure. Dual Stalliance, sure. The only one that could have used the additional reprint was Ash Blossom. But in terms of set design, it was a good call to put it in the Battles of Legends set. That set was shit on a fucking stick, all right? Alistair, Ash Blossom. Two main reasons to go after that set. People wanted another Ash reprint. Don't put it in the tins. Tins are already going to sell because of the promos. It's funny how that works. Promos are shit, but for some reason they'll still fucking sell them. People like value. People like lottery. So there's that. Now, my next question is, what are the secret rares in the set that make the tins good? Mech Knights, Firewall, Boralode, Saruja. I'm willing to take bets 
<laughs> Borlode, Saruja, Fireball. The good cards, the ones that, you know, people want, are going to be slightly harder to acquire. It's We've seen it in the past with sets like this. Um, I think, just in terms of, like, general set construction, we've got, what, 24 secrets? Um, take your odds mm, between them. Uh, you got, like, five good, decent secret rares um, in the whole set. So, I mean... Uh, maybe more. I, f I forgot evenly match exist. Sorry. Sometimes evenly does kind of tend to fall off of the sector. But in terms of just what's available, it's not bad. Now, the ultras we're not getting. Ignis and Dynamite. I was talking about earlier, um, if you want true Draco, you're not necessarily too fucking late to get on the train, but you are going to be experiencing slightly higher price value because of hype. Shit like Die Earth, Performa Pal Gatlingul, Zodiac Chakanayan, True King's Return, Fully Armored, Punishment Dragon, March, Double Helix, okay, sure. Like, Mystical Jackal King, X Code Talker, Triple Burst Dragon, Clara Rushka, Boot Sector, Mystical Blustery, and Isolde. Alright, so the first one I'm going to say here, not having a soul day in this set, Konami, what are you doing? Your player base wants that card reprinted. Are you going... You've you've started producing this Noble Knight support again. I, Noble Knight support means you would think that there would be some sort of want for a reprint of the Solde. But that doesn't seem to be the case here. A Solde would have made the ultra rare sector of the tens much better. And we've already seen a Solde start spiking in price because of this. Now... Not putting a soul day in the set, once again, the big six cards are going to sell the set. Not having Ash Blossom in the set, once again, kind of hurts a couple of people. Might hurt Billy and Bob, but Jolie and Annie and the rest of them are going to go out and buy the product and just be like, well, fuck you, like, I pulled my Ash Blossoms. You know, it's, it's kind of how it works. But a soul day wouldn't have sold this set. <laughs> Ash Blossom might have been able to. Um, Double Helix not in this set? That's interesting. Uh, I mean, the cards are already cheap as bonkers anyway. I'm not too worried about that. And then top things off, like Zodiac Chakanine not in the set either? Hmm. It's interesting to note that, like, Dragonic Diagram is in the set, but yet Ignis, Dynamite, and Dire Earth aren't. Um, that's a really interesting choice um, from what I've seen. But... I'm willing to look past it. Uh, I, I don't know, I'm just, I'm genuinely curious to know what their design for that was. Outside of that, it's holding not in the tens really fucking sucks. Like, ugh, so bad. Uh, super rares we're not getting. The Gates, Metaltron, Zephyrath, uh, what else is worth? Spiral Sleeper, Mrs. Radiant, some Metaphys stuff, Vaguska already got his reprint. Vendred stuff. Interesting to note, last year the Spiral stuff was not in the 10s, um, and then this year they're opting to not put Vendreds in the 10s. Um, I think it's starting to kind of become a rule that TCG exclusives just kind of, they dodged last year and they've dodged this year. Now, it's not a good thing to look at previous patterns and shit like that, but it it's starting to become a trend that's like, if it's a TCG exclusive, it's not going to be in the tins. It almost just might be better just to take the L and pick up the stuff while it's in circulation. I don't exactly know what's going on here, but there has been this particular loss of just, we don't want to reprint TCG exclusives. Fuck it. So, just my two cents there. I think that overall, like... Uh, the, the tins are eh, eh. Um, in terms of product design Ash Blossom not in the tins to the casual community or uh, to the intermediate community was a kick in the balls we know this um, but Firewall's first reprint very important to the community easier to get copies of Evenly Matched the copies of Borolode Saruja these particular power cards need reprints. And considering their prices and shit like this, 
30 to $40 for Firewall Dragon was ridiculous. Is it worth it to go pick up reprint of Firewalls? Your guess is as good as mine. The community, the community at the end of the day knows that this shit show that's going on right now with these fucking asshole Link monsters, you know, Nightmare Goblin and company, like, we gotta wait and see what Kami's kind of going to do to Firewall and things like that. But overall, the tins are good for what the tins need to do. They supply reprints to the community. They allow the player base to better pick up more cards to ensure in the long run that additional copies of Firewall, additional copies of Borlout, these staple cards lower in price. And it's not to the extent in which I think we want them to go, but it's going to do its job in this. So tomorrow, we're gonna to talk about, are the tins going to be worth that 1999 MSRB price tag, or $20? As we like to say should you pick them up that'll be a discussion for tomorrow remember like this video and tell me hey fat purple guy purple chicken nugget feed us no you feed me all right bye guys the ride never ends guys make sure you enable those notifications to get the latest videos that are being posted on this channel make sure you guys check out van cole 40 for my card fight vanguard channel and join me and house of champions on the zodiac duelist tv twitch stream I will be interacting with our audiences. And please check out No Limit Gaming and LGTCG.com for the cheapest trading cards on the market. Thanks for watching, guys, and please have a good day.